Hello, welcome back to Smith Robotics. Today we are proud to show everyone our newest animatronic head to the family, introducing the real life spring trap. The spring trap suit is an old decayed and mouldy spring bonnie suit. The spring bonnie suit is a spring lock suit just like Fredbear. They were made to be both an animatronic and suit so people could wear them and perform. This was said by phone guys training tapes in, fa in FNAF 3. Uh, hello, hello, hello. Uh, welcome to your new career as a performer slash entertainer for Freddy Fazbear's Pizza. Uh, these tapes will provide you with much needed information on how to handle, slash climb into, slash climb out of, mascot costumes. Right now we have two specially designed suits that double as both animatronic and suit. So please pay close attention while learning how to operate these suits as accidents, slash injuries, slash death, slash irreparable and grotesque maiming can occur. First we will discuss how to operate the mascots when they are in animatronic form. For ease of operation, the animatronics are set to turn and walk towards sound cues. This is an easy and hands-free approach to making sure the animatronics stay where the children are for maximum entertainment slash crowd-pleasing value. To change the animatronics to suit mode, insert and turn firmly the hand crank provided by the manufacturer. Turning the crank will recoil and compress the animatronic parts around the sides of the suit, providing room to climb inside. Please make sure the spring locks are fastened tight to ensure the animatronic devices remain fixed. We will cover this in more detail in tomorrow's session. Remember to smile, you are the face of Freddy Fazbear's Pizza. So basically they have a lot of spring locks inside, which if it ever touched or has been exposed to water or moisture, it can easily be set off. Okay, that should be the basics about who Springtrap is, so now let's get into my Springtrap animatronic head that I have built. First of all, he was originally going to be Spring Bonnie, but then I thought since he is a prototype, I'll make him in Springtrap, since not everything would work out with your first ever prototype or something. So, the, the model that I was given was very kindly given to me by one of my team members, also a friend, in the Fazbear Projects group that I'm in. He also gave the models for Withered Foxy and many other animatronics. His YouTube name is Nighthair903. I'll link his channel in the description. He's very good at what he does with models and also animations and everything. Even though he hasn't got much going on on YouTube, it's still pretty good. Then what I did was basically imported the spring bonnie suit onto Blender, resized it so it could fit around a six foot tall man, also me. <laughs> then what I did after resizing it is imported the model onto Tinkad so I can redesign and everything because stupid over here still can't use normal CAD even though he's had it for months now. <laughs> when the model was on Tinkercad I then started designing mechanisms for not only the electronics but also for real life spring locks as well. I base where the spring locks were originally off the model and also some of the photos off Scott's original spring trap model. Then I decided to design my own mechanisms for the spring locks. At the moment, me and Technofur have been discussing about new mechanisms for the spring lock suits. Since he is making a full spring bonnie suit, it is actually really awesome and everything. I, I hope everyone checks it out as well. Like his, his channel, his channel is just amazing and everything. I can't, I can't stress enough how great it is actually. And everything and him as a person as well he's also very nice and great and everything so i'm going to leave a link to his channel below as well as everybody else's who i've referenced in this video but anyway i started modeling the mechanisms and started printing the head at the start of april printing off the jaw mechanisms and then the bottom jaw as well 
that is also including the spring locks as well at the sides and everything the jaw mechanisms of how the jaw would actually open and close since that hasn't really been seen any in any of the games and that at the moment but i will get to that in just a minute then after i started printing the head itself as well as the eyes which the eyelids were originally going to be movable but with the size and everything it did work but then it didn't afterwards i'll get into that also in a minute but then after the head was completed i then spray painted the head i spray painted the nose black and i painted the teeth individually and everything as well so after i also added some anti-pull fleece fabric off of amazon with two different colours, one darker and one a bit more lighter colour of a shade of yellow. I chose these colours and also where to put them as well, not only from the 8-bit minigames which we've only seen of Spring Bonnie himself, but also in the character encyclopedia as well. After 3D printing and spray painting, the most hardest part about making the heads is pretty much just placing the fabric. We've all been there as cosplayers and people who make animatronics and everything. It's it's the most hardest part about it because you have to try and get it so right that it just doesn't look off and awful, if you know what I mean. Pretty much I start by placing tape around the head and jaw on one side. Then I marked out where all the pieces were going to be cut out and where the eyes were going to be and pretty much everything else. After cutting all the pieces out, I then place them on top of the fabric, on the opposite side of which you actually want to be shown onto the animatronic. I then trace the line around the pieces so then I can easily cut them out. I also flip the pieces onto the opposite side of them so I can get the other side of the head done as well. The most hardest part about it is probably hand sewing all the pieces together to make sure it fits on top of the head almost like a glove almost because that's what i try to do pretty much where i got this idea from was actually d regular source who actually well showed it on youtube probably about a year or two ago and on In the end, I think my hand sewing skills do need practice, but I think for this one, it was the best one which I've ever done. Because the only other time which I actually did hand sewing for my animatronics was actually with Foxy. And the other ones I did not hand sew in them at all, I literally just applied the fabric and glued them on and everything. And cut out the bits and seams and that to try and hide them, but it just didn't work out, so I decided to do hand sewing, which I thought was better than it actually was. It was great. Ooh, a very good important tip if you're ever going to hand sew is always trying to find some sewing string which actually matches nearly to the colour of the fabric, fabric that you're using. For me, I found black which wasn't actually the best at first but then I found an orangey colour which actually worked better. Then after that, all I had to do was start making the ears, which was quite not simple, but not difficult at the same time.
While still building the ears, I took the head apart and removed the servo motors from the ears in order to not damage them. Since the ears were quite heavy, I used 35 and 40 kg servo motors in order to make them work and stay upright. After removing the servo motors, I then heated up my soldering iron and carved out the pieces of the head that matched the original Springtrap model to give it a more real decaying look as if, it, as if Afton tried to tear it off while he was in the suit. After carving away the pieces, I then got a tub of water mixed in with green paint. This idea was used from Jack Tim Creations, where he used this idea for his Springtrap suit. His other work is quite good as well, he doesn't always do Final Fantasy Freddy stuff, sometimes it's Batman, sometimes it's just other stuff, I haven't been watching them recently, but his stuff is quite good, I'd recommend watching it, it's pretty, it's pretty amazing. This idea was used to give Springtrap his older, mouldy green colouring appearance that I've seen in Final Fantasy Freddy's 3. Since the paint would sometimes just go off with the water and everything, I had to hand paint myself a few bits here and from there using either a darker green or a lighter green and that to give it like a very mouldy effect and everything, especially around the teeth and different parts around the eyes and everything. You know, just to make it very, very decayed and everything. I did the same thing as well for the outer ears as well when they were finished printing. I basically quickly applied the fabric on top of them. I then used my soldering iron to carve out the bit of how it would actually look in the game. And then I put in the tub of water, gave it that mouldiness effect, then I let it all dry out within a couple of hours. It was pretty much dry. But anyway, when everything was dried and everything was done, I went back to the model and added a few more bits of detail of paint here and there, a bit more mould around the ears, around the eyes, around the back, especially because I sometimes miss that part. But as well, I added some red paint inside the suit as if William Afton has actually just died in it as well, like all the fake red blood and everything going around inside looks pretty good but i wanted more than just to look like paint has just been spotted on, on everywhere so later on actually it was just the view of the day actually that i ordered some fake blood as well and i put that on the inside to give it that realism effect as well and everything i'm not gonna lie the fake blood is actually quite tasty as well because it's a type of syrupy mixture as well, which is edible. Um, I will leave that in the description below if anybody would like to see that. So basically I had to 3D print them off first and then I wasn't very satisfied with how they look and everything because in the games they are pretty much just clear plastic. So what I did was get some Christmas ornaments, usually like Christmas baubles and everything like that. I then put the 3D printed eye over that, then I got my soldering iron, carved out away the pieces are, and basically that was pretty much it. I stuck them back onto that. This is because with the endoskeleton head in, nobody could wear it. It would be impossible pretty much unless if you want your whole skull or crushing them and stuff. And that also brings up a very important case here because I don't think Springtrap's eyes are an animatronic's eyes. I think they're actually William Afton's eyes. 
but I think a lot of people either get confused or they believe that no 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 it's the spring bonny eyes and that they were hidden away how though if you've got them on then then how do how would that work and everything now that I think about it it's a bit stupid <laughs> Anyway, the head can be worn and there's a bit of a squeeze to get on because the spring locks, yes you heard me, spring locks, the head has spring locks for the jaws, the, the eyes and even at the side of the head. They are not fully finished yet but we're still working on them at the minute. As shown before, some of the spring locks made in an L key which is usually for us and screws and everything like that but we kind of act uh, as the hand crank at the moment or the prototype it doesn't really work all too well you have to move it around and everything while you're actually wearing it so it's a bit messed up in a way but it's still cool the mechanisms though at the side of the head are actually based off the AR model of spring traps since it actually gives that all type of cage type bit around the jaw an actual use for it to like open and close the jaw which i think is pretty cool and but i decided to give crawling with the suit on uh well the head on a try so i tried to recreate that off of the uh, final to freddy's free when spring trap is crawling through the vent so yeah i yeah, it was a bit hard and everything because I couldn't really look up and as well behind one of my ears, one of the spring locks, it, it, it keep calling on my ear so I couldn't really do much about that, so yeah. But anyway, to add to the realism as if spring trap was actually real, I decided to use makeup and everything to make myself the rotting corpse of Afton uh, himself. As I think a built in corpse head, just like D regular sources or other YouTube, like other cosplays and that, I do feel like that is pretty cool. But for me personally, I'd rather just make myself look more like it as just to add to the more realism, like to real life. So, what did I do? Well, first of all, I made prosthetic teeth out of polymorph plastic, which can be easily moulded when placed in hot water. So I placed that around my mouth, so it moulds the teeth in and everything to make it almost look like it's gumless as well. No teeth were actually ripped out and everything. Then I added some plastic rods to make it look like as if the spring locks have activated and went through up through my mouth, which looks pretty gory and everything, I quite like that. And I added some... Mm, no. To add more to the realism, I added some fake blood, which I found online and everything. It's actually quite good as well. It's, uh, it's also edible because it's this type of syrup and that, not maple syrup, which would have tasted nice. But yeah, it, it makes it look like it's blood and everything, and it's sticky as well. So I added that. As well, I experiment more to see what it would look like if spring locks have actually run off. So, I used L keys as some of the spring locks and used some wax as well, which I got with a little kit to apply my face, then added uh, the fake blood. Just before I continue, ooh, who is that handsome chap? Never mind, he looks terrifying as hell. <laughs> As well, at the minute, I am working on a full spring trap suit, hopefully done before Halloween, so it'll be a nice Halloween surprise for everyone since last year when I said, oh yeah, I would make the Freddle for Halloween. Nope, it took until January, the beginning of January, for it to actually be fully done. And at the same time, 
it didn't even work as I intended for the Freddle, which was a little bit of a disappointment, but since it was the first start into it, I thought, hey, could have been worse and everything. So yeah. But right now I am testing some designs with uh, the hands and everything like that. I will get to the torso. So with that and my Endo 2 project coming along, the version 2, it should probably take around August or so until it's fully finished. I'm not really too sure. Hope I hope it will, though. No. That'll be pretty cool. come. 